good evening you want thank you i thank you so much for joining us live this abundant life from mercy praise the lord let's take a word of prayer father in the name of jesus we want to thank you for such an opportunity giving us a lot to have fellowship with you through the spirit and by God. let your name be glorified lord tonight as you keep showing us a lot the hidden details of our christian life the work of the spirit working in a way that is meaningful to our spiritual life and our natural life as well father for we are the light of this world show us how to illuminate our world even as you cause our hearts to be illuminated by your word today spirit spirit of god you are dedicated to showing us revealing to us the son the heart of the father that we may walk with the heart of god we well, thank you tonight we come against every form of hindrance let your name be glorified glorify the lordship of the word in our heart let our hearts Lord, melt of every doubt of every hindrance of anything that would be of misunderstanding to the light and the simplicity of the gospel let the gospel be glorified tonight in jesus name amen God bless you tonight. Make sure you share to as many as possible. God bless you so much. Okay, so um, last week we were looking at um, the heart of man, how unstable it is. The Bible says the heart of man is deceptive above, above all things. That's God's testimony concerning the heart of man. You know, God made man in the book of Genesis. I want to I show you something um, in the book of the beginnings. I always love to go there with you so we can um establish we can establish the fundamental truth of, of god's word every doctrine that is traceable to the book of the beginnings is truly a doctrine for our present our reality it establishes the truth before the law came what was life like in the garden of eden what was life like so um Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's go. Um, the book of Genesis, chapter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, Genesis chapter three. I want to show you something. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I think before then um Jesus. Okay, Genesis three. Very fast. Okay, Genesis chapter three. Look at this. Um the verse the verse one. Um, now the serpent was more subtle than, a, subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, ye, ye, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the tree of the, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die uh, and the serpent said unto the woman you shall ye shall not surely die um look at this genesis chapter 2 round um verse 16 now look at this and the Lord said, and the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. You may freely eat of every tree in the garden. You see, God gave man the free will to choose. But look at it. There was a caution given man. Then he says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, 
thou mayest freely eat of the garden, choose of which which of the animals, to, you know, the, the trees to eat of. But when it comes to um, the tree in the midst of the garden, it says, even that one, there was this tree of life there, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God gave man caution. You know, he guided God man's choice. Man is a free, you see, free moral agent as God made him. He gave him a heart to desire. You see, the heart to choose. And I'm talking to you about appetites. Last week, um, we're looking at the heart, you know, we're investigating to the heart and how unstable the heart could be. But tonight, I'm talking about appetite. Although um, you called last week's message appetite, but then, well, how true, they, how true that is. But this is the real appetite. To see the appetite of the heart. What are appetites? What has God to say about appetite? Are you aware that where well, one may end finally has to do with the appetite? And appetite, um, the, you know, uh, let me tell you this. Do, do you know that there is something that rules man's heart, that drives man's desire? The heart of man is ruled by that. The natural man is ruled by the, you see, uh, his, his heart is ruled. The will is ruled by a, you see, a force propelling him to make decisions. His choices, the decisions are being led by something or, or propelled by something. And that thing is called appetite. A drive, you know, a, a, a natural strong feeling of wanting. That natural um, feeling to satisfy a bodily need. The body needs something. It's soulish. The cravings, the edge, the desire, that feeling of wanting to have, strong wish for something, and in its edge, it's within man, biological edge, to attain a goal or satisfy a need. It is very strong. God made man and allowed this, that man may have the will. The Bible says in the book of um, Ecclesiastes 3, the verse 11, that he made all things beautiful and he set the world in the heart of man. And I keep telling you, the world over there is a Greek word, is a Hebrew word, olam. He set the world, eternity in the heart of man, that it is unlimited. You see, now God made man to be a global being, the world, the global being to, uh, though you are, you you are yourself and others the trees and what have you they are different entities but that we may have that kind of compassion a feeling toward them to satisfy a need god's goal dress and keep the garden mend it add beauty to it so that the life of the animals will be beautified the the life of 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 animals will be beautified the trees will be beautified uh helping man would have you know now the the, the the balls of mercy will be churned, activated to show compassion in terms of man's relationship with God, to have fellowship with God with some emotion. The Bible says to you know to serve the Lord or love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with your strength, your soul. See, it has to do with some kind of feeling. It is free. Move toward see, move toward God in fellowship. That God will come and walk in the cool of the day that man would move toward him. Something will drive man. There will be a craving for God's presence. You know, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Man, you know what? I have made you, but there is something I put inside of you. I have wired you with some energies. One of such is called the desire to drive the appetite. The edge, the innate, see, edge to drive it, to propel you toward a goal and my goal should be your goal that was God's plan you know what Jeremiah says something as we talk about the fall that drives or the edge that propels or carries along that is you know carried along by force to meet a need it becomes incessant or you know uh, um, upon the you know man's desire to, to just the or wish to to have something to attain something to meet a goal it is called appetite. And last time we saw the appetite of a, of a man called Reuben. How unstable the guy was. How could you, how could you, Reuben, your father's own cockaban, your father's girlfriend, how could you? Look at the desire. How could you? 
Desires when were not checked. I want to read to you from the book of um, Jeremiah. What Jeremiah said uh, in Jeremiah 10, the verse 23 from the Amplified Version. You know, don't forget last week we went on, we looked at Jeremiah 17 and uh, we saw that, you know, but verse 10. The Bible says, but I God set the heart and examine the you know the mind. I get it. I get to the heart of, of, of the human, the heart of the human, the core of life, the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are, not as they pretend to be. So I go deep down the heart and I, I know your desire, I know your appetite, I know what even drives or propels your appetite. You know what I'm talking about? I know what your appetite is for and I know what drives your appetite. Some things drive our appetite. <laughs> you know, so uh, we looked at the devil over there, how, you know, it was Lucifer was with God in Ezekiel 28 and how that one day he set his heart to be as the heart of God. He desired to be above the stars of God. He desired you know, to, to, to inherit the throne of glory himself. It is desire to, you know, it caused traffic. The appetite. Where from this appetite? Let's look at it. So God initially formed this in man so that we could serve God with compassion. We could laugh compassionately. We, 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 we could show emotion toward uh, now our drive toward God. Like David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And not that... um. You know, the, the, the cravings will be for the wrong thing until the fall of man, that the heart of man got corrupted. So the Bible says that I know man that from the, you know, from, you know, the imaginations in the heart of man from his youth is continually evil. Maybe I will take it there. Maybe, just maybe. Maybe. But you know what? The Bible says this. So let's read that first and then we come to Jeremiah 10, 23. I'm going to give you Bible characters and it's going to really inform your, your life of righteousness, your choices. Make sure you share this. I want to have more viewers today too as well. Let, let it go far. That's what the Holy Ghost says. It's a message they gave me for the world. We keep talking about um, desire, what have you. There's a time now. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the devil himself also has a desire and then he says his desire is to have you. In the book of Genesis 4, the devil desire was to have um, Cain, but he says um, in Genesis 4, um, 26, you know, verse 6, 7, listen to this. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrath? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt not, shalt thou not be accepted. But if thou doest not well, sin light at thy door. So, so there's sin that lies at the door of man. Embrace him and look at it. And unto thee shall be his desire. So, the sin over here, there is this craving over there that is, that is lying at your door, the door of your heart, don't allow him in. Now, he lies at the door. He desires to have you. Now, but that shall master it. It's a ruler. There is a ruler. There is a king, the Bible calls it, in the book of Proverbs 27. There is a king. There is a ruler. In, in the book of Proverbs 26, 23, 1, 2, we're going to go there. You know, there's this king that rules the heart. And if you allow him in, he will rule you, govern you the wrong way. Now, um, chapter 6. Genesis 3, 6, um, the verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he, he also is flesh, weak, yet nefesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, let's jump from verse 4, talk, talking about John that were born. Verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Follow this. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, the desires of his heart, the contemplations of his heart, his imaginations, was evil continually, and it repented God that he had created man. Oh, Jesus. So faladada, deku shalaba. And it grieved him at his heart. You see, so all the imaginations of the heart of man became corrupted. The Bible says, for all of, see, the foundation of the earth, all the foundations are out of course in Psalm, Psalm 20, Psalm 82. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They've, 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 uh, um, um, they've um, veered off the path of 
righteousness for no you see for no other reason than this than you now david prayed a prayer and then he confessed by the spirit he said show me thy ways moses says so and he also said the same thing now then again he said thou you know lead me in the path of what right thou led me in the path of righteousness The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone our own separate ways. In Romans 3, the Bible says, none, see, none know what the way. See, all have gone astray. None, none do it good. We're talking about appetite. So for the book of the beginning, see, God said that the imagination of the heart of man is continually evil. Evil continually. Evil continually. Evil. What is that imagination of the heart of man? Why is the Bible saying so? Look at this. Now, so God made something called the human heart with the will. Are you following? That desire over there until it got corrupted. But before then, look at God's original plan. In Jeremiah 10 23, from the Amplified Version, the Bible says, Oh Lord, that Jeremiah, oh Lord, plead Jeremiah in the name of the people. He was pleading with God. I know that the determination of the way of a man, the determination of the way of a man, the determination of the way of a man, as you go, what to do next, you don't know. There are appetites, there are cravings. Do you know that you desire to be a medical doctor? You crave for that. That's why you're still in school. Are you aware that someone loves a woman so much? He's craving to have a woman. And so he's planning is dressing up is doing whatever he's doing now it is not in him to plan that thing are you aware it is the desire that is driving him the drive one hates someone so much the devil has put see sin light at the door desiring to have this man to be a killer to be called a murderer so the man will start calculating the imagination in the heart of man is continually evil why is it so so jeremiah says in jeremiah 10 23 praise the lord Oh Lord, please, Jeremiah, in the name of the people. I know that the, de the determination of the way of a man is not in himself. There's a semicolon. It says, it is not in a man, even in a strong man, or in a man at, at his best, or that I'm a just man, to direct his own steps. Why is it so? It is not in man to direct his steps. <laughs> In the book of Job, in Job 32, I want to read to you the verse, verse 8. The Bible says, but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So God made for man to have an inspiration to guide him. What is your inspiration? What is your drive? There's a drive that should propel that appetite, that desire in your heart. What is the core of your desire? There is a, a, a spirit in man. See, the heart of man is the spirit of man. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the events of life, are the issues of life. All that would happen, to, all that would ever have happen to you are coming exuding from your spirit. The contemplations, the calculations, the drive, the desires of your heart. Like I said, someone desires so much. If God has a destiny for you, then God must give you an appetite for it. You have to see the will of God. You have to desire. You have to be willing if you are willing in obedience. So there is the willingness and there is the cost to good obedience following the path of what you desired. So the energy of the will propels you. To go for it. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, to pursue after. But you know what? They are, see, um, the appetite as they are, they come with drives. But there is a force that catapults that drive, or that activated drive. That innate force that carries along itself the energies to achieve, to meet. The desires of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for good understanding. 
that the people may know that the Lord is a drive, that there's a force that drives, that edges, that propels, that carries along itself a force in a specified direction. This is what I want. So, we are talking about appetites. God made a heart. God gave man the heart, the appetite, the heart, the reservoir of appetite. But you know what the Bible says? The way of a man is not in himself. That means it is not meant for man to direct his own steps. In Proverbs 16, the Bible says, The preparation of the heart of man and the answer of the lips are from the Lord. So God desired to direct, to guide our steps. Thou, see, you, you lead me in the path of righteousness. He's the one to lead us in the path of righteousness. So I read to you from Jeremiah 10, 23, that he said, For I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in man at his best. The strongest man, the strong, see, the strongest willed man to even direct his steps. There will be some, the ruler, and you know, a ruler, an appetite, something that will drive him. And you know what? You know, there are three things about appetite that we we'll talk about. Appetite always goes for one thing, one common thing. And then number two has to do with the timing. The wrongness or the correctness of, of the appetite or the desire is based on a timing. And finally, finally, the, the goal, the purpose, it fulfills. It is not wrong to have sex. It is not wrong, but the timing makes it wrong. It is not wrong to eat food, but the timing makes it wrong. Gehazi, the Bible says in 2 Kings 5.20, he says something uh, but he has the servant of elijah the the, the 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 man of god said behold my master has sped this Naaman, ah the syrian in not receiving at his hands that which he brought but as the lord leave it the god the guy crosses out as the lord leave it my god I will run after, I will pursue, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. I have to take something. As the Lord leave it, the guy crosses his heart. Ah! As the Lord leave it, as the Lord leave it, I will go after this one. I will pursue. And I, I love the, you see, the, the answer, the prophetic answer that came to him. Is it a time to, to, to receive talent of gold, silver, ch change of raiment? Is it a time? For those things so the timing the timing what you also desire there are, you know there are three things and the fourth one i'll give to the, those who are spiritual listen it is wrong to desire maybe we have to go there let's build on revelation upon revelation let's build revelation so um the appetite in man was designed by god appetites are not evil they are good they are God, see, they are God's creation, the, 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 the invention of God in the heart of man, God's own creation, God's own making to have, you know, man to crave for God, that, you know, there'll be that emptiness to seek God. There's a vacuum in our heart always to, to have God occupy. And since the fall of man, because the devil did try to bring desire, he says, this food is, this fruit is desirous. And the woman saw that mm, this is something that they desire to make one wise. You have to desire, you crave for it. So he began to tantalize. See, e, 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 oh my God, he dangled that before their eyes pendulously. Can you see this fruit? You know how the devil is able to play promos or adverts to advertise and um, bring the sanitation to you um, to, to promote a product making you even like it if it is uh, uh, later to your health it is not good to your health or for health is able to brand it very well promote it in such a way that you crave for it the reason for advocating what have you is for the desire to elicit a desire in you to crave so that there'll be a craving the reason for the message the communication or whatever that we give to you if i hate someone you have to understand why i hate the person so that by the time i'm done with you you also hate the person that's what the devil does all the time we preach the message of the of the cross to you so you may love jesus you pray for him so the see you have to know the finality of um uh, 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 all the the the, the 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 end of every communication is to espouse a desire in you 
to cause to desire something check your appetite appetite can kill appetite can end ministries appetite and i can tell you destinies were shut in the bible because of appetite the wrong craving and the timing at the time when kings go to war out of war second someone 11 what was david doing was at the top there and he saw he saw uriah's wife Bathsheba, who was taking a bath and Marco Shalababa, what he saw triggered something in him, the trigger, the drives, and his appetite for the woman came. In the end, he killed. And we're going to look at how a king who had so much, Ahab, so many vineyards, he had so much. But in that of Naboth, you know, and the Bible says something there's no limit to what appetite can do. And I want to just quote a scripture to buttress this. Now, you know what? In the book of Proverbs 23, verse 10, the Bible says, Remove not the old or ancient landmarks. So they are, they, they are landmarks, parameters, boundaries. Enter not into the field of the fatherless. Naboth was, you know, he had that which belonged to the fathers. It was give, bequeathed to him. And the king desired, because of his appetite, if for God that God says don't remove the ancient landmark, there are, are boundaries. And there's a semicolon to that. It says, enter not into the field of the fatherless. But the guy had no regard for the word of God. He was growing lean. He was sick. I have to read this into you right now. And see how we could crave for the wrong thing. Then again, you can look at um, 2 Samuel 13 from verse 1. Ha, this is what you know, one son of David by name Ammon and a daughter, Tam, you know, half sister, Tama. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! How that the Bible says the guy loved the wife, the sister. He loved, you know, there was this last for his own sister, and the guy was growing lean by, you know, do you know that, do you know that the friend of, of, of Ammon asked him. Are you not the son of the king and you are growing lean by the, by the day? You are getting leaner and leaner. What is it that is eating you up? Ah, is it not my sister? I love my sister so much. Are you sure? That's wrong, but is that what you what you want? Then why don't you rather, you know, and you cook up a plan? Why don't you allow your sister? You can read that in from 2 Samuel 13. Why don't you, you know, tell the king about this, your intention, and, you know, have your sister cook for you? And let her come into your closet, into your chambers, to feed you. Do you know what? After, when the, when the sister brought the food, he, 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 you know, he had already connived with, with his friend. He sent, he sent out all the, 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 those that waited on him, the servants, of that of the sister and, he, and then himself, and called the sister to the bedroom. And she came into the chambers, and, and he was like, feed me over here. I wanted to feed me. I wanted to bring this soup or whatever to my bed and feed me. As she came and seven, she, it was like, uh, I want to, to sleep with me, to lie with me. Interesting. The sister said this wrong and he overpowered her. And just after what the Bible said, he, you know, just as the guy loved, loved the sister, you know, love sick, that he was even feeling feverish. The Bible says, having laid with her, the, the desire that he had for her turned for bitterness and he immediately hated the sister more than the love that he had for her. What an appetite. What an appetite. It's demonic appetite. Devilish, sensual. The Bible says so. The wisdom that descended not from above is earthly, carnal, sensual, demonic how can you desire your own sister? Knowing so well that this evil is incest, the sister even says so. Yet, because there was a drive. Now look at it. So Jeremiah said that the way of a man is not in himself. So, who directs? And that is why Job 32 verse 8 says, But there is a spirit in man. So there is a spirit in man. But the inspiration of the Almighty, the spirit, the pneuma of the Almighty, grants him understanding of his ways. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God directs you. The word of God is the reader. The word of God is our compass. That directs our steps. If the appetite of man is not 
world control ruled. Let me read something to you from the book of Proverbs 23. Proverbs um, Proverbs 27 first and then we will look at it from Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you. So let's read to Proverbs 25 first. Look at this. He that has no rule over his own spirit, over his own appetite, his cravings, is like a city that is broken down and without wall. I will explain to you very shortly. What does it mean? The one that has no rule over his own spirit, his own appetite, if this is what he wants, that thing can wait. That's why, in the, you know, in, in Christ we have what we call the self-control, the regenerated human heart, human spirit. Our spirit is regenerated. You must be born again. If not, your appetite can drive you to hell drive you to prison drive you to kill can lead you because appetite are dry see they have the drives that trigger actions from us and they espouse fruits of evil or good it its own focus is to meet the end the process does not matter it doesn't matter what means it takes it must achieve its purpose and that's sinful that's sinful God gave us that that we can with faith move on in love and hope that ah I'm being led by God's spirit therefore I must move all the way like David who so had heart for um a, a sheep his flock and so when the when the when the when the ravenous uh, wolves came or or whatever the lion the wolves or whatever it came the bear came to 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 pounce on them he also went after them pursued because this appetite will cause you to run after pursue like he has said and i'll pursue he has said in second second kings five five the first 20 he said uh but he has the servant of god the man of god said behold my master has spared this name the syrian but as the lord lived, behold I, I, I shall run after this man. I'll pursue him. When your appetite calls for something, it is just the end that justifies the means. As I get, I don't care. So long as I have to get this, if I kill before I, I, I get to power, that's why politicians are killing in Africa, maligning others just to have. You know what? I will tell you how to control the appetite because it has to do with choice. You see, um, you don't, if I put, um, if you're a man and I put a man before you, I put a woman before you, majority will go for, unless if you are saying I'm wrong, unless there is some chemical imbalance in you, man will go for woman. That's how God ordained it to be. Appetite toward the desire longing for the bible says without natural affection in romans 1 talking about the perversion that they are without natural affection that means god and the bible said they will go for inordinate sex a man to man woman to woman it is you know that's not how god established it fornication is wrong adultery is wrong but then as it is between man and man and woman it is um do i say it's better off that's how god ordained it but the inordinate because man cannot cannot rule his own spirit and that is evil let's get let's get down to this he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down a city that is broken down and without walls without boundaries without limits so long as i want this i must have this how can a man have appetite for man are we normal then Jeremiah will tell you, but I told you, the way of a man is not in himself. So it is, it is not the man himself. But that's why we are saying that those who are not normal. Why? Because they have wrong appetite, the drive in them. Whether biochemical imbalances, you must understand that they are not normal. This is not how God ordained it. The one that made appetite, the desire in man. He did not, he did not ordain man to pursue after the wrong thing. Guide your appetite check your appetite check your desires desires can kill do you know that the reason why satan lost his place is because of the same thing desire the appetite he, he desired to be like god 
he craved for. The Bible said he caused traffic. I explained to you last week. Do you know that Judas lost his bishopric? He lost his office because of that thing. I have to raise something to you right now. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, there are siblings, two siblings to um, what we call happy touch. Proverbs 25, um, Lego Shalawa 28 is what I read to you right now. Proverbs 25, 28. He that has no rule over his spirit. You know, it's like a city that is broken down. The city is broken down without walls. Anything at all can enter. Any, any, any desire at all that comes, that man can do it. He has no rule over his appetite. Therefore, if the appetite says kill you, he will kill. Start the person to have power, he will do it. Whatever the appetite desires, that man will pursue after. David said, one thing have I desired, Marco Shalaba. One thing I, I have appetite for, and that will I seek after. Appetite will cause you to seek after it, to pursue one thing. And appetite is always for one thing. But there are several ways, several things. You see, appetite would, would, would come with a drive to destroy, to lamb, see, to lambast, to, as it were, destroy, vilify, murder, just to get to the end. And why do people rape? They have craving, incessant, no craving. See, they have that craving for one thing. And it, once they are done, they, they just despise the person. Wrong appetite, wrong desire. God, the appetite of God is to long for and cleave together. But it's, we saw it just as um, Ammon long, he used the word love. I love my sister to, ah, to understand that I'm so sick. I'm love sick. But she, that love over there, that lust over there, that lust over there led to death. He, he hated the sister and that brought about partition in the family, division, because they have siblings. And that also triggered the reason why Absalom never forgave his father. Because the father should have acted. But the father couldn't do it. Desire. And also, Joab lost his place, his relationship with God and the king because of his desire. When that those appetite comes for revenge, he had to do it. He, nothing could restrict him. Let me let me read something to you right now. Logo Safra Dego Zia Dea. Proverbs 27, let me show you something. It is not so clear, but look at it. There are two siblings. You know, they actually there are three, but two that the Bible made mention of. Um, that uh, 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 that tags along. See, that are uh, that tags um, along themselves with the main man called appetite. Wrath is one, envy is two. Now, just get this. Proverbs 27, the verse three. A stone is heavy. It's no stone. He's talk, talking about rock over here, but that's the word used. Rock is heavy and sun weighty, but a fool's wrath, a fool's wrath. Oh Jesus! See a, a fool and his wrath. A fool's wrath is heavier than them both, than the two put together. Then verse verse verse, verse four. Wrath. Look at it. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? When that guy's appetite comes for what someone owns, he doesn't care to kill, he doesn't care to, 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 to stab. Why must you have that? And that is covetousness. Jesus spoke about that. You see, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he has in the flesh. Your life is to serve God and the purpose for which God brought you here. It is to serve purpose. And you have a purpose and the purpose is so defined. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things, the connections that he has. No. It is to serve God.